What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage and today it's finally time for an update on the powered trailer movie. All right, so I mailed this trailer mover back, uh, you know, beginning of the year, January, something like that, uh, to serve one major purpose. I need to be able to move my trailer without my truck in order to get cars shuffled around in the way that everything works in my garage. So let me show you. Here's my 914. There's the trailer mover, broken. This is the VW 411 we bought back in March, and there is my trailer. The trailer has to come in the gate, make this corner, go all the way through the grass, way over there where the light is by the fence. And so right now, when the trailer mover is down, I, I'll explain that in a couple of minutes here, the 914 is blocked in by the trailer, the trailer is blocked in by the 411, and that means I don't get to play with any of my toys. And it just kind of makes things a lot tighter around here. So the trailer mover has been my most successful, uh, best video I've had on the channel. I think it's like 20,000 views or something right now. It's a useful thing that a lot of people can do and uh, pretty easy to put together. If I people offer to buy it, can I build them one? Can I sell them plans? Uh, things like that. So I'm gonna try to address some of the comments from the first video and I'll give you guys an update on uh, the version one and uh, what we need to make version two. And then uh, as requested, I will show a real time video of using it to move my trailer into its position. So bear with me, it's gonna be long. Uh, so let's take a look at the trailer mover and we can kind of talk about uh, what's working and what's not. All right, so here's the trailer mover as it sits. Badlands 2000 winch, two and five sixteenths ball. That's one of the questions I got. Why didn't you do one and seven eighths? Uh, because of the way that the machine sits, if it doesn't latch, it tries to walk up underneath and walk out from underneath the trailer. So I want the tightest connection possible. It is not welded. It's just uh, hand tightened on the bottom. So you could change that for whatever you need it. Uh, the big problem that we've run into here is tires are totally flat. So what I did is I was running the trailer mover, moving the trailer, uh, the tires were a little low and it spun the valve stem and just completely shredded it. So I got a couple new tubes from Harbor Freight and we're gonna put those in. The other big thing that is an issue is this gooseneck system here for the arm is not very strong. If you can see when I do this, you can see how much it flexes and it actually flexed to the point where it's pinching the battery. So the solution is more steel. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna just weld this brace in right here. Uh, I'll, I'll get it, make sure that the battery clears and we will burn this puppy in place and it will make sure that this thing does not rock or does not uh, have a problem. So in general, the trailer mover doesn't have a problem with power, it has a problem with traction. Uh, so going off road, there is grass, it's wet, there's holes, uh, it's uneven. A two axle trailer has a ton of friction when you turn it. So in general, it has plenty of power to push or pull, especially when it's on hard pack. Uh, but when we get off road, that's where this really starts to become an issue. One of the other questions I got is, can I use the trailer mover with a car on the trailer? And I think the answer is no. Um, maybe on a flat pavement, uh, but the problem is the motor kind of has one speed. And so there's no soft start. So I think it would, it would start at its full speed, which is still pretty slow. And it would just break the chain or spin the valve stems or something like that so that it didn't give us a chance to do that. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some air in the tires and uh, get that brace welded on and then I'll show you guys how the trailer mover works and how well it works for this application. So uh, probably one of the most useful things I've built. Uh, not something you need every day, but when you need it, you need it. So uh, prior to this, I did mention in the other video that I tried it with the ATV, I've tried it a hand mover, and none of that really worked. Um, I had a 350 Rancher with a really low hitch, and so pushing up and trying to make those corners with a two axle trailer, it, it just wasn't happening. Single axle stuff is a lot different, a lot less friction. As best I can tell, my trailer weighs between a thousand and 1200 pounds um, it is a steel frame with an aluminum deck it's got uh, a winch and uh, you know two big heavy mobile home axles uh, big hubs brakes on one of the axles but it does have aluminum wheels no ramps or anything so uh, I think it is really purpose-built for kind of what I need uh, but uh, I am gonna try to get it over to my buddies at retro Renos and let them test it out with some of their scamp campers uh, they move things around their site all the time and so it'd be a good test uh, to let them run that so we're gonna jump into time-lapse here and uh, we're gonna get into fixing this up starting with those wheels and tires and then we're gonna weld that brace in and then we will go take it out and grab the trailer and give it a shot. Let's go.
All right, we are back in action. Uh, that's pretty not super professional looking, but I don't really care. It's super strong, and now the battery comes out easily. It was pinching it. What was happening is when you push on this, it was really flexing, and it's still got some flex, but uh, uh, we're gonna try that out and see how it goes. So I'm gonna get the camera set up, and we're gonna do this in real time. I have to move the car, and then we're gonna push it all the way to its home. The grass is freshly cut. It's not very wet, so hopefully it won't be too bad tonight. And you guys will see, I have to give it a little bit of help at certain spots, a hole or whatever. I don't know what I can do to get more traction other than more weight or chains or studs. I don't know, I thought about putting bolts through the tires. So we'll just have to see, because I do operate it both in the dirt and on the pavement. So we're gonna get set up and let's push. All right, the timer is rolling. So pull this off. If you don't have a bolt lock for your vehicle, you should get one. So when I pull the clutch out, you can pre-wheel it but because it's all kind of locked in and uh, basically always two-wheel drive. It doesn't turn very good. So like I said, I put it on the two and five sixteens because that's what my kit trailer is and having it locked in makes a big difference here. I like to just pull this off and put it on the deck. All right, hook up our battery and start pulling and pushing and get it to where it needs to be. Make sure you take the free spool out. It also helps to make sure that wheel is where it needs to be. All right, we're gonna get right over the camera here, so let me move it. So I find it helpful to make your directional changes static and small, and then you can go from there. So if this was a really heavy trailer, would not be an option. So I'm gonna make these changes. You can see right there, it's spinning just a little bit. Um, so let me move the camera up here on the deck. Let's see if you guys can watch what we're doing here. Try to give you enough light. Because of the overall length of the trailer and the size of my driveway, it's a pretty tight corner. All right. We're gonna pause right there. And I'll show you guys where we're at. So this is where we started and I've made my corner. So I'm gonna go around point of the fence, pull up, and then push it back in there on the other side of the pergola. So I'm gonna set the camera down, you guys can watch me go by, and then I'll move it. Right now, time check, it has been four minutes.
you can see I'm having to push it a little bit. Uh, it's just wheel spin and it'll spin on the pavement. It'll spin in the dirt. So it's not a torque or a motor problem. It's just a traction problem. So um, I don't have the answer. I've even tried sitting on the trailer tongue to try to put some more weight on it. But um, it's another good reason to keep that battery on the mover, put as much weight on those wheels as possible. So we are at five and a half minutes. I'm gonna put you guys back up on the trailer and you can watch as we get ourselves the rest of the way around here. I know it sounds gross, but when it hits dog poop in the yard, it's incredibly slippery, like ice. So, we're getting close to our spot. This is where it goes. This is where we are. So, I'm gonna keep running it through. We'll try and get you guys as much as we can do. Right now, we're at six and a half minutes. All right, nine minutes from way over there through the grass to its home. So for me, this thing is the difference in having a trailer at the house or not. Um, so it makes a huge, huge help for me. Um, so the trailer parks here, I really want it to go down there, but it's about three inches too wide. The axle stick out past the deck width that I made. So it's kind of built for a purpose here. It's a little bit of a small trailer, but we'll get something bigger eventually. So. That's where we're going to leave it off for the trailer move it tonight. That extra bar added a ton of rigidity. So uh, definitely an upgrade if you're doing this or if you're thinking about building something like this, make sure that your arm has plenty of structural rigidity in the horizontal plane so that I can. All right. That is where we're gonna end off tonight for the Barefoot Garage. Trailer mover is in better shape than ever. That little brace made a huge difference in the kind of horizontal rigidity. You guys can see I kind of put my foot right here as a push 
and it does what I need to do. Um, I'm not even sure that a commercial mover uh, would work like this in the grass because there's tons of little dips and holes and uh, slick spots. So if you like projects like this, we'll have some more cool DIY stuff coming. If you're building one of these, let us know. I'm happy to answer questions. There is a link in the description to the Google Drive that includes all the parts I used or about how much steel I used and everything like that. Lots of stuff from Harbor Freight, cheap battery from Walmart, and a uh, little bit of time in welding. So stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage here on YouTube. Drop us a comment. Let us know what you're doing. Or you can follow us between episodes at Barefoot Garage Jacks. See you guys. All right. Side note. I've always wondered if it would push a dead car. And the answer is... Not really. Run a little bit. <laughs>